guys. Um, first and foremost, I want to say welcome to my YouTube channel. Um, I'm going to use this channel to upload training videos, to upload uh, recipes, um, and also to do this, which is to update you all on what I'm doing at the moment, my diet, my training, uh, the whys, the hows, the whens, um, just to try and kind of show you guys how I build muscle, how I shed fat, um, how I enjoy myself and how I push myself all at different different times of the year for different reasons um, and I thought for my very first YouTube video it would be really appropriate for me to talk you guys through week one of my fat loss phase which just started so I have been reverse dieting since uh, December um, slowly slowly increasing my uh, calories via my carbohydrate intake over the course of uh, December, January, February, and now just at the beginning of March. Um, in an ideal world, I would have continued on with this uh, reverse dieting, um, increasing my calories, decreasing my cardio, um, and maintaining uh, where I've been at. Um, because it's really important to understand that you can't spend forever in a fat loss phase. It's not good for your body. It's not good for you mentally. It's not good for you physically. It's not good for you hormonally. It's not good for your uh, progress in the gym in terms of your performance or your aesthetic results. You have to find um, kind of a long-term way to do this. And in my opinion, after doing this for seven years, that long-term approach tends to look like a big fat loss push, make no mistake about it, forcing your body to burn into fat for fuel is a real slog. It takes a lot of hard work in the gym and it takes a lot of hard work and discipline with your diet. Um, and that is how you get fat loss results. So that's how you do it. I'm not a big believer in starting off wishy-washy and kind of walking a wishy-washy path and wondering why you're not getting results. It doesn't work in my experience, in my opinion, and I think it would be lovely if it did, but it doesn't. So I tend to tell my clients and for myself, um, go into a fat loss phase and you give it 100% and you progressively over the period of a few weeks and or months uh, add cardio every time you plateau or you can decrease calories every time you plateau. by a really gradual amount. So both cardio and calories should be played with to a really, really minor degree every time you plateau for longer than two or three weeks. You do that over the period of, well, up to six months is what I recommend. And then you slowly, slowly come out of it and you actually reverse the process. You actually start to increase your calories very slowly, uh, week on week, you start to decrease your cardio very slowly, week on week. And what happens is, of course you gain some weight back and of course you gain some body fat back. That's inevitable. But essentially, you kind of re-stabilize your body and you do not go back to square one, to where you were beforehand. You just kind of gain a little bit to a healthy degree. You get your hormones back to a healthy level again. You get your metabolic rate back to a healthy level again. And you try and maintain there for a few months, again, ideally up to six months before re-entering a fat loss phase. And that's how I do it. And that's the only way that I've ever seen long-term results for both myself and my clients. Um, so that's what I do. Now, I've had the last 12, uh, 13 weeks of reversing. As I say, I would have liked it to have been longer. That's quite short and not ideal, so I don't recommend it. But obviously my job um, involves a lot of fitness modeling and I have a big shoot uh, coming up at the end of May, beginning of June. So I have to be in photo shoot shape by then. So essentially, I'm slowly reversing the reverse. So I'm slowly going to start adding in calories, um, sorry, deducting calories, probably via carbohydrates, uh, certainly to begin with, um, and then increasing my cardio week on week. Um, and I won't do it every week. I'll only add to it when I plateau um, or if I'm getting kind of close to the end and I'm not quite ready yet, uh, I'll ramp it up a notch. But I thought I would talk you through what the first week looks like comparatively with what last week looked like. So, um, 
I never, ever, ever cut cardio completely, even when I'm in a gaining phase, if I'm trying to gain muscle. Uh, the reason for this is because being cardiovascularly fit is really, really pivotal to your internal and external, um, but mainly your internal health. You know, you need to be able to move, especially if you're training properly, if you're doing weight training, you're still doing big compound lifts, like squats and deads and stuff like that. You need to be physically fit enough to handle it. And also you wanna be physically fit in life. I don't ever wanna, to, if I'm gonna be honest, I've never not walked up a flight of stairs and been out of breath, it's never not happened. But I don't wanna feel like I can't, you know, I don't know, walk uphill for five minutes and catch my breath, that would suck. So I never cut cardio completely. But for the last few weeks, I've been doing 10 minutes a day after weight training. So 10 minutes a day, six days a week, 60 minutes a week total. Um, I do that after weight training and I just do it to stay fit. Um, also, you know, it does help with not adding on too, too much fat back after you've come out of a fat loss phase. It's kind of good to keep some kind of, um, kind of calorie burning optimi uh, optimal training in there. And that is what cardio is. Um, so the first thing I've done week one of my fat loss phase is up that to 20 minutes a day, six days a week. Um, now those of you who follow on, me on Instagram will know that I say uh, some people will feel that this is too much too soon, but I never cut my cardio. And an addition of 10 minutes is not intimidating for me at all right now. <laughs> I'm sure as I go deeper and deeper into my fat loss phase, uh, the idea of adding to cardio is gonna become more and more painful, but right now I'm fine with it. Uh, calorie decrease, so now I've basically increased my cardio output, so my energy expenditure, which is a surefire way to eat into some of my calorie intake. Um, and the second thing I've done is um, immediately implement a calorie decrease. Um, so food intake has gone down. So I was eating last week uh, just over 2000 calories a day. That was made up of um, a three, two, one macro split. So uh, that what that means is I have, was having three grams uh, of carbohydrate per kg of body weight, two grams of protein per kg of body weight, and one gram of fat per kg of body weight. So slowly, slowly, slowly since December, I've brought it up, obviously my weight's climbed a bit, and I've continued to match that with my food intake. And I basically got to just over 2,000 calories of 140 grams of protein, that's the two, 210 grams of carbs, that's the three, and 70 grams of fat, that's the one. So three grams per kg of body weight of carbs, two grams per kg of body weight of protein, and one gram per kg of body weight of fat has left me at 70 fat, 140 protein, and 210 grams of carbohydrates. Um, just over 2,000 calories. So now week one of my fat loss phase, the first thing I've done is I've brought down 210 grams of carbohydrates to 190 grams of carbohydrates. So the first thing I've done is taken off 20 grams of carbohydrates, which has seen a calorie deduction of 80 calories daily um, and an overall calorie intake of uh, 1,950 daily. So this is what I mean. I'm starting off super slow. Um, I've added some cardio right off the bat and I've decreased some calories right off the bat. Now, what I plan on doing is for these first few weeks, just decreasing carbs. I don't wanna to touch my protein. I don't wanna to touch my fats. I just wanna get my carbs down. Um, and slowly, slowly, slowly as the weeks pass, um, I'll probably start I'm not doing it now. I have no plans on doing it week one, maybe not even week two, maybe not even week three. But as my calories start to get lower and my cardio starts to get higher and my body fat starts to get lower, I will start implementing consecutive refeed days. So I will start implementing Saturdays and Sundays of higher calories via higher carbohydrates. And the reason I will do that is that as my calories get low, my cardio gets high, my body fat gets low, my hormones are gonna take a hit, which means my metabolism is gonna take a hit, my recovery is gonna take a hit. And those consecutive refeed days are basically going to stoke my metabolism, they're gonna stoke my recovery, they're gonna stoke my hormones, um, and they're basically going to kind of keep me at a more kind of optimal hormone and metabolic level while I continue to, to um, 
progress in my fat loss phase. But as of right now, I have enough body fat on me right now that I don't need to do refeeds. I have enough calories and 190 grams of carbohydrates right now that I do not need to do refeeds. Um, it will only happen when I start to get leaner and when I start to struggle. Um, I track my calories and macros, which I know a lot of people don't do, but for me, it allows me to hit my numbers with a bit more freedom. So initially, in these first few weeks, as long as I'm hitting my numbers, I'm not gonna be so pedantic about my food sources. I eat really healthy anyway. Um, I tend to eat uh, like lean, lean steaks, um, chicken and fish, um, protein powder, and egg whites is my protein, because I like them. Um, I tend to have a lot of veg in my meals. I'm a really big believer in micronutrients and health. Um, and my carbs are usually made up of things like oats, um, cereal, um, bread, uh, rice. So yeah, I mean, it's kind of a free for all. Sometimes I will drink as well. Um, so I will usually put those uh, calories that I'm expending on alcohol uh, towards carbohydrates. Um, and in terms of fats, uh, to be honest, I, I have a lot of fish and nut butters um, and eggs. Eggs is a big one. So that's kind of where they come from. Um, but generally speaking, like if I go out for a meal, I'm not overly, you know, panicked that I'm not meal prepping or whatever in the beginning. I'll just count my numbers and track my numbers. I've been doing this for years, so I'm quite good at guesstimating. However, as my calories get lower and I start to get closer to that shoot date, that will stop and I will become a little bit more um, psycho about it because when you have less calories to play with, you really try and go for high volume foods, foods that are gonna make you feel full. And when you get closer to a shoot, you really don't wanna mess with, with what you're looking like. You kinda of wanna be a bit stricter um, so you know what to expect as the days uh, progress. You know, if you, if you mess around with your food intake, you mess around a bit with your digestion, um, water retention, sodium, that kind of thing, and it can kind of panic you as you get closer to a shoot, let's say like if you're two or three weeks away, and you can't see changes happening in your body um, because you're messing around with your food and everything can kind of get thrown off, off track visually. Um, it's just, yeah, it's just, it's kind of good for me mentally to kind of clean it up towards the end. Um, but yeah, that's where I'm starting. I will show you guys a photo of um, physically kind of where I was at after my last reverse, which wasn't really a reverse. It was, it started out really well and then it just ended up with me throwing myself into a buffet for like five and a half weeks, which didn't end well for my uh, body fat. Um, I'll show you where I was at my last uh, lean stage uh, in December. Um, it was very little. I don't know if you can really see it in the image, but I'm gonna put it up anyway. Um, I was very lean. I think I was about 13% body fat. Um, and then I'll show you where I am now and you'll be able to see the difference between what a real kind of uh, <sighs> adherence to a reverse diet looks like on me versus when I don't adhere to the reverse diet. So you'll be able to compare the two. And you'll also be able to see what it looks like when I'm at the end of a fat loss phase versus what it looks like now um, at the end of a reverse diet. And now is kind of where my body sits more naturally. Uh, like I say, the, the photo that I'll show you when I threw myself headfirst into a buffet uh, was definitely quite big for me. Uh, the photo of me, you know, after a fat loss phase is definitely small for me. And where I'm at now is pretty normal for me. Um, so yeah, I'll upload all that. And thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you found that interesting. I hope you found that helpful. Please interact with me on here. Um, subscribe, uh, comment. I would really love to hear your feedback. Um, so yeah, I guess I will do another one of these next week and I'll see you then.